welcome to The Real Story. The Federal Reserve Bank cut interest rates yesterday, and of course, Wall Street cheered. How great is this? After all, consumer spending now accounts for over 70% of our real domestic product, and they want that gravy train rolling. Go out and spend. Go to the mall, America. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The real story is, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, or in this case, consequence. We are living in historic times. We recently set four major new financial records. And despite what you're hearing from the self-serving financial experts who want you to buy their stocks and take out new loans, these records are all related. First one, the housing market. It continues to fall apart. Home foreclosures in the third quarter are up 100% over last year. Meanwhile, home prices fell another 5%. In August, in the 10 largest U.S. cities, that's the biggest drop in 16 years. We now have eight straight months of falling home prices. And all of that has resulted in fear. Fear of banks defaulting, fear of unemployment, fear that millions of people will lose their homes. It's that fear that drove the rate cut yesterday. But unfortunately, as is always, when the government tries to solve a problem, they create another one, and this time, no different. Cutting interest rates makes money cheaper. Cheaper money makes people go out and buy more stuff, which means there are too many dollars chasing too few goods. The result is not only the possibility for massive inflation, but also a U.S. dollar that's in a virtual free fall. It hit an all-time record low against the euro today. That is record number two. It's down 40%, 40% in the last seven years. To people in Europe, your dollar is literally now worth 60 cents, which brings us to oil, which traded at over $96 today, yet another all-time record high. Now, a lot of people don't understand the relationship between when the dollar falls and uh, oil, but when the dollar falls, the price of things we import, which, look around, is almost everything, goes up. Oil, no exception. Oil that used to cost us a dollar now cost us at least a dollar forty because of our falling dollar. And finally, record number four gold. It's nearly $800 an ounce, a multi decade record high because investors are getting out of the dollar. I told you earlier that the government intervention, like yesterday's Fed rate, always has a consequence. That consequence is a loss of confidence in America by the rest of the world. This is what they see. They see our mounting debt personally and with the government, the talk of higher taxes, more spending, and they're running away from putting their money here and they're putting it someplace else. That only drives the dollar lower, oil prices higher, the Fed starts to panic, which makes them lower the rate, and the whole damn cycle starts all over again. Peter Schiff is the president of Euro Pacific Capital, the author of Crash Proof. He He's a financial guy. I'm not. Where did I go wrong, Peter? You haven't. I mean, you're one of the few people on television that I can listen to talk and not want to throw up. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I mean first of all, <laughs> here's what I don't understand, Peter. Most people aren't feeling it. How does our dollar lose 40% and yet we only have 1% inflation? Well, yeah, here's, here's a, the, the, the biggest joke. The numbers that the government reported yesterday, the GDP number that Wall Street celebrated, which showed a 3.9% growth, in order to get that, the government first takes the nominal GDP and they adjust it by inflation. Now, the inflation rate the government used to adjust the GDP was eight tenths of one percent. The government is claiming that annualized inflation is running at less than one percent. That's the lowest rate of inflation since Dwight Eisenhower was president. But how is that possible? It's when not our dollar. Our it's dollar. <laughs> That's the point. It's not possible. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, it's false. The government is creating the illusion of economic growth by playing with these numbers. Peter, I, I had dinner last, uh, last week with a, with a bull. Uh, he is an economist, one of the best in the country, and he is a bull. And he said, one thing I'm really afraid of is the dollar. He said, uh, you know, it's, it, it could very easily go into a free fall if it doesn't stop, if the, if the Fed doesn't stop cutting the rate. It's... And it's, what it's, is the magic number? When does the free fall begin? What is, should we see on value loss in the dollar that we should all go, holy cow? Well, I mean, it's already going down. I mean, look at, you know, you don't have to go up to Europe. Look at the Canadian dollar. It's worth a dollar six. You know, back in 2000, the average American earned about 70% more than the average Canadian. Now, they earn about the same. 
I mean, this is a huge so, loss of wealth for Americans relative to everybody else. I, I think the dollar, in, in a best case scenario, is still going to lose about half its value over the next two or three years. Wait, Unfortunately, wait, wait, wait. That's half of happen. where it is now? Approximately, maybe 40, 45, because we've already lost some. But, you know, during the 1970s, if you go back to between 1972 and 1978, the dollar lost two thirds of its value during those seven years, and it never got it back. And I think that the dollar is in for another decline similar to the one we had in the 1970s, only this time it could be worse because the monetary policies are worse, uh, the fiscal problems are worse, uh, we're in much worse shape economically okay. than we were in the 1970s. All right, Peter, thanks. Now.